Hey everyone, welcome back to Summit. My name is Mark. This week we're taking a look at the Epiphany of the Lord. The Epiphany, this is a very important feast. It's a high feast. You've heard of the 12 days of Christmas, right? That, that song, 12 days of Christmas. Well, this is the 12th day of Christmas. We, we, we go from Christmas to Epiphany, you have basically 12 days, okay? And this is a celebration, not just of the birth of the Lord, but the revealing of the Lord to the world. The word Epiphany comes from a Greek word, which means to reveal. Right? So we like our big words in the Catholic Church and our big feasts. But at the end of the day, to boil it down, the simplest way to explain it, epiphany means to reveal. Why? Because this is where Jesus' identity is revealed to the world. Right? Now, oftentimes in movies, in, um, in uh, literature, in pictures, we see in nativity sets, we see the three wise men, the magi, there with the shepherds, with Joseph, with Mary, the angels, the, you know, the ox, the donkey, all that kind of a thing. When the reality is, is scripture doesn't say that they arrived on Christmas Eve night. It's a very popular idea when you, when you watch like a movie, right? like the nativity story. It's beautiful, it's romantic, it's kind of cool to think that it got timed so perfectly as they followed the star. When the reality is, when you read the scriptures, when you read this week's gospel, it says that they arrived, they found Mary in a house with the baby. They would have arrived afterwards, okay? So, so they wouldn't have been there necessarily that first Christmas Eve night. They would have been there later on, right? Now, is that really important? Yes and no. Here's why. If this is about revealing Christ's identity to the world, not just to the Jews, that's a big deal. In the first reading from Isaiah, we hear this prophecy. They're going to come from the east. They're going to come on camels and dromedaries. A dromedary is just a camel with one hump. Camels have two, dromedaries have one. Just a little nerdy fact there. They're coming from the east, from, from, uh, from afar, and they're going to follow this light, and the light is going to cast light over the darkness, right? So the glory and the splendor of God is going to cast out the darkness. So it's going, to, it's going to be this revelation, right? That's what reveal means, revelation. So they're going to come from the east. Why this is so important is that they weren't Jews. They were Gentiles, non-Jews. Why is that important? Because before Jesus, right, before Jesus comes onto the scene, Israel... The Jews were God's firstborn child. It didn't mean that God didn't love everybody, but that God has a special relationship with Israel, with the Jews. But after Jesus comes, now God's message of salvation, his invitation to salvation, is going to be open to everyone, Jews and Gentiles alike. That's why St. Paul was, was such a prolific writer and such a big deal, because he was the apostle to the Gentiles. He wasn't just coming to try and tell the Jews that they were going to be saved, but that everyone had a chance of salvation. And even as you're reading this, it says in the psalm, every nation, every nation will come and know the glory of God. Every nation will know the mercy of God, the love of God. Every nation, not just one nation, but every nation. Because the message of Jesus, the message of love and mercy and forgiveness and salvation is for every man and every woman of every culture and every background, the world over. But what's interesting is that in the gospel, St. Matthew, St. Matthew's primary audience was writing to Jews. So one would think that he's not going to like emphasize these Gentiles coming in to offer these gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh and to come worship him. You would think that Matthew, because he's writing to the Jewish people, would, would, um, would hold up Jewish people, like, would hold like the shepherds, for instance, you know, who came to worship Christ in, in the manger, who, who came to, to see him. But St. Luke does that. It's interesting that St. Matthew goes in a whole different direction. St. Matthew is actually trying to send a really important message to the Jewish people. Hey, you're still special to God but you're not the only people. You're not the only people God cares about. You see, Jews and Gentiles did not get along. They did not have a good relationship. They would avoid each other at all costs. And Matthew's trying to explain to his fellow Jews, hey, you know what? They're our brothers and sisters too because of Jesus Christ, because of this revelation, um, epiphany, when God revealed his identity not just to his Jewish children, but to his Gentile children. And what did the Magi do? We can actually take a lot from this example. They traveled they put their gifts at the service of the Lord. They put their gifts at His feet. They went to the effort. It takes effort to go to Mass. It takes effort to pray. It takes effort to read Scripture. All God's really asking for at the end of the day is that we put in some effort, that we show up physically, emotionally, spiritually. Show up to Mass. Show up with intentionality. Show up early. Dress nice. Show up. Bring, bring your intentions. Show up to the Lord in prayer. Show up to the Lord in Scripture. Show up. Be present. And then lay your gifts down at his feet for his glory, to reveal his glory to the world. See, it's not about using the gifts and talents God's given us for our own glory, but about using everything that's been entrusted to us, gold, frankincense, myrrh, your intelligence, your compassion, your humor, your love, to take all those gifts that God's given us and to share them with the world to bring the glory to him.